Hey, um, so yeah, I am going to sort of give you like a status update um, on SANE. So basically back in, in August um, last year, um, you know, I've been experimenting with um, this backend framework called SalesJS and switching to that and using it with Ember. And so now it's kind of like sort of like, you know, like what has happened since then and, um, you know, like what's, what are the things um, that, that we've learned. Um, yeah, so, so just a quick recap for people who don't know what SalesJS is. So it's a convention over configuration framework uh, built on Express. So it's, it runs um, on, on Node.js. And it also is API first. So basically when you generate something, it immediately gives you um, a REST API. And yeah, in terms of, of usage, um, yeah, it has you know, like 11K stars, if this says anything about usage. It has decent support um, and yeah, decently sized community to, to actually, you know, like when something goes wrong that you actually can ask people um, about help. And yeah, so, so one thing that, that came up when I gave the talk, it, it sort of it started out as um, we used it for one of our um, <coughs> just projects, you know, like I, I glued everything um, myself together, SalesJS and MRJS. They weren't 100% compatible just out of the box. And then released it as kind of like a boilerplate um, on Git. And yeah, I remember one of the questions at the end, like, why not just use generators? And that was basically how Sane Stack in itself came about. Because before it, it was, you know, it was, you had to Git clone it. And it already used Ember CLI actually, but basically whenever a new version of Ember CLI came out, you know, you had to manually update the code and, you know, like push it onto Git. And so it was um, super tedious. And also Ember CLI shows the power of generators, um, I, I think. And yeah, so, so that's basically um, how Sane came about. And uh, that's um, the name behind it, if, if, any, if anyone was wondering. So um, yeah, SalesJS, and with it, you can use pretty much um, any database. You can write adapters, and it supports like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Mongo, um, and a bunch of others. And yeah, Node.js and Ember.js. And so yeah, so basically it, it essentially just glues these two frameworks, a back -end, you know, the backend framework and the frontend framework together and essentially makes it a full stack framework. So essentially it's like you have mean stack, I think is, is, is pretty much the, the, most, the thing that's, that's most comparable to it. And I guess you can also compare um, Meteor to it if, if any of you um, know about that. And so it's, so now if you, you can actually npm install it. And it is sim quite similar to Ember CLI and it installs um, a sane CLI on your machine. And under, under the hood it actually uses Ember CLI and it provides, it also uses the CLI that sales provides. And, and then on top of that, basically when you create a new project, it just, you know, it runs, it runs the Ember generator, it runs the sales generator, and then just in installs a bunch of um, extra like um, packages that basically just make it work together out of the box. So um, to, yeah, to create a new project, um, that is what you do and what you're used to from Ember CLI. So when I wrote the CLI, I, I you know, like, um, leaned heavily on Ember CLI and I've realized it's, it's a really great piece of software. I <laughs> um, um, have a lot of respect for all the work that has gone into that. And um, yeah, saying CLI purely exists because of um, Ember CLI and I could look at the code and see how they were um, doing stuff. And yeah, so here you basically, you you know, like in Ember CLI, you just give it a project name. You can choose the database, whichever database you want to use that is supported. And then if you want, you can use Docker. So the benefit here is you don't even have to, ins you don't even have to have PostgreSQL installed in your machine. It just installs the Docker image. And, you know, you, you can just set up um, any database and any like server on any, on any machine that just has Docker. So you also, you don't need sales installed and, and it just, um, Docker just handles um, all that for you and it also hooks 
everything automatically up with the database. So when you do that, you don't have to, you don't have to do any um, configuration to set up your database to do anything. And the idea then is also that you can just move this one-to-one -to, -one to production, um, even though um, that is within Sane still a little bit away, since I um, haven't been able to use um, Docker I'm yet myself in a production environment. But so that, that is the idea um, behind it. And yeah, so what about generators? And um, yeah, so yes, indeed, you do have generators. And so you can run saying generate um, resource um, user's name string. And basically what it does in the background, it just runs an Ember CLI, the Ember CLI generate resource command. And who, um, anyone who has used Ember CLI knows um, what this does. But then the cool thing then really comes because it also runs the um, the sales command in the background, and because everything is already hooked up, Ember you can immediately like access a live API um, through Ember. So if you use something like um, Ember CLI admin, I think it's called, you can even you can you can essentially get a CRUD interface without writing any code with with just um, writing. Um, commands on the command line, so it's so you can prototype extremely quickly, and you can prototype extremely quickly with an API that you can actually put on a on a server, and that you can actually hook up with a production database. Um, so I think um, so that's I think pretty useful. Um, yeah. So so what has happened actually since August, and what is the stuff that actually that I've and a couple open source people have been working on? So as I said, it started out as this um, boilerplate that you could git clone, and now it's this CLI tool. And yeah, it's, it's now it has cross-platform support, so it works smoothly on Linux and also on Windows. Um, it's, in fact, um, used by, by a couple of startups. Um, one of that is a, a funded startup in, in San Francisco. Um, so that's pretty cool and, and pretty inspiring to hear um, that there are that there are you know, like companies now actually building on top of that. And yeah, so, and that's, I think, one of the biggest points is, is uh, and most inspiring points that's, that I've been working on in the last 10 months was really the community. It's, it's been incredible like, just to see like, that um, people actually contributed. But the biggest thing was really um, Gitter. So I don't know if, you, if you've um, used Gitter or heard of Gitter. But I guess it's similar to the Slack Amber London community, just that Gitter automatically hooks up with, with GitHub projects. So when you have a Gitter project, you immediately have um, a channel on Gitter. But apart from that, it's, it's like a chat app. And, um, and that was really what, what drove um, Saints like in, in, in the last month. And, and it's, it's been really incredible. Like there, um, yeah, you can see there's now 180 people. And there's even two people from Africa now who, uh, they're, they're like kids, I think one is like 17, and um, they're just using Sainstack like on their side. And, and I've actually been like um, hel helping this little kid like making his first um, Git um, push and creating his first um, Git repository. So, so that was something that I did not expect at all when I um, first started out um, last summer. And um, you know, like, just decided, you know, like, this is useful for me, so I put it open source. I'm sure it's going to be useful to someone else. Um, so yeah, that, that has been um, really cool in, in, in unexpected ways. And also that in, in, in the States, there have been on in two other Amber meetups, and people have given um, talks about saying, so one was, um, was it Michigan somewhere? Uh, somewhere. Somewhere in the middle of the states, <laughs> all, all the same, <laughs> um, and also in in Seattle. Um, yeah, so, so that has been pretty cool, and and something that has been quite interesting. Also, I mean, of course, it makes sense that you know like the community, we're sort of like yeah, a community within communities. So there's of course you know like the people who who use Ember, um, who you know like um, get attracted by that, and people from sales who get attracted from it. But I think the most interesting bits. Um, which happens much quicker than I than I um, 
than I imagined was people who were just looking for like JavaScript full stacks and then finding sand stack. And so they had actually no idea about MRJS or SalesJS. And so actually seeing that the docs, which assume that you know at least one of the two, um, seeing that the docs are, you know, like can be improved for completely new people. And also then seeing that they ask Emma specific questions in sand stack or sales specific questions um, in, in, sand, in the sand stack um, um, channel. But, but yeah, it has been quite cool to see that there is, there is sort of, it's sort of like almost a community in itself because there's these new people coming in, but it also connects um, these different communities and it's all quite um, friendly and, and, and quite helpful. And, and people are pretty active when you have any questions. And yeah, so, it's, so that, that I think has been um, yeah, quite cool. And yeah, so now that you know, like you've seen what, what we've done um, over the last um, couple of months, and I hope that you, you know, will go and, and try it out if you want to. So the, the plans over the next couple of months is um, to actually put SANE into um, an open source organization. So that has already been created and has a couple of like, side projects. And, but there are still a few things that have to be done in the background to move, move it um, from the company um, uh, or from the company GitHub repository to the open source repository to really just um, you know, like enforce this community factor because that really was what, what kind of um, you know, like helped Sane like really or helped me, you know, like that was really the main drive for me to work on on Sane. You know, like to just fix bugs that didn't actually affect, you know, like anything that I was coding, but you know, like that affects other people or Windows support. Uh, <laughs> I could have not bothered to add Windows support, but yeah, there were um, another guy stepping in and actually adding Windows support. And yeah, something that's been in the pipeline for a really, really long time now is um, full stack add-ons. And so it's. It's again. It's it's a little bit based on on Ember CLI add-ons, but actually on on like an older version of Ember CLI add-ons. But the idea is, for example, if you have authentication, that you can just have one command to so say install um, auth or something, and it just adds the right um, Ember CLI add-ons on the front end. It adds the right packages on the back end and just like hooks it up, so that you can just immediately get um, you know like at least a basic authentication um, setup and it, it more or less works. It actually just needs me again sitting down and and fixing a few last minor bugs and, and releasing it. But it, it, it's, it's actually working already and it's, it's kind of cool that because authentication is usually something, especially with, I think when you have like just two completely separate pieces, that's, that's usually quite hard. And it actually, it, when I tried it the first time, it, it definitely um, took me a while to get it running. So it's, it's kind of, it's pretty cool now to see that a basic authentication you already get running with, um, without having to write um, anything yourself. Um, so yeah, um, that's, um, that's it. Just a little bit of a status update. Um, yeah, um, thanks. Questions from anyone? Um, yes. Uh, it just occurs to me that you had the slide up there where you put your generate resource and you're generating an Ember resource, and I'm sure I read somewhere that they're disappearing quite soon. Yeah. So I was just thinking, like, you put one half of your project, one half of the particular wrapping is not at like 1.0 yet, and the other is Ember, which is always adding stuff, and it's about to take a lot of stuff away. Yeah. So, how do you manage sort of keeping up with two? Yeah, it's, it certainly is, is a challenge, especially because <coughs> there are also some things, because the team behind Sales Chess is, is, is a quite small, like independent team of, of five developers. <coughs> so they're also, even though they are, they are actually now having a good plan of, of trying to increase <coughs> contribution, but they're also having, you know, like struggling of, you know, like supporting um, all the requests that are coming in. And so there, there has been a struggle also, like from my side, there could have been things that could actually go into sales core, but just purely 
haven't been done because it's much easier to just plug it in on like you know like on sane stack level mm. um, rather than making a pull request you know like seeing that it gets, gets in and yeah it, it definitely is 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 a struggle to, to keep up with it but I mean in the end it, it really is just possible with other people because like you know when when you're by yourself it's it's yeah it's 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 pretty hard but but also on that side it's you know like having I think the best step was already you know, like adding Ember CLI as a dependency and then running the process of <coughs> Ember, you know, like of Ember commands that already you know like minimized you know like a huge amount of effort because now you can just update you know like your Ember CLI and it just runs you know like the Ember CLI commands and you only the only thing that I really have to change is up you know like when the Ember CLI commands change you know like change the these commands which fortunately don't change that frequently. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And also, there's usually a um, bunch of people immediately shouting <laughs> when something <laughs> breaks. <laughs> that's that's the good thing about the open source community. When something breaks, you're usually yeah, yeah. quite quickly hear about it. <laughs> and also, Ember CLI will, will hit 1.0 soon, and then you'll have some semantic versioning uh, yeah. constraints to keep everything a bit more manageable. Yeah, exactly. That um, will also be uh, super important there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again.